Hello, friends, it's Romania Black, and we are back to Moda Zushi. Oh, chapters 54 and 55. So, um, when we last left off, we reached the turtle cave. We're here. I'm not gonna lie. I, the last time I recorded for Moda Zushi, uh, the novel thing was right before I left for New Year's. I took a little break. Uh, for New Year's and so I didn't record or do anything for like four or five days which is unusual for me because I'm usually recording at least something every day and so that was like the first four to five day stretch where I wasn't recording anything and I was like this feels weird but the whole time I'm not gonna lie the whole time I was on break I kept thinking we're at the turtle cave <laughs> so that this is literally like one of the first things I've recorded coming back from break I was like nope gonna sit down and record the turtle cave because we're here and so I'm really really excited because I will be honest ever since I've started this novel there are some scenes from the Donghua I've wanted to get to. This is one of them. And so we're finally here. And we started the flashback. It's great. I, I'm honestly really excited to see what all we get into with these two chapters. I'm only doing one audio drama, so this may be a shorter reaction than usual and shorter discussion. Or it might not be, because I'm going to be reacting to episode 11 of season 2 of the audio drama. And then I was suggested that I needed to look at the Wangshin video that comes with the extras for the audio drama. So I'm gonna look at the Wangshin video, whatever that entails. And then I'm gonna read chapters 54 and 55, and check out the Manhua chapters for that, and then come back and talk about the two chapters as a whole. So it may actually be, it may still be probably maybe about an hour long, but usually these have been like an hour and a half. So it's gonna be a little shorter than usual, but that's just the way that it's worked out. I have a feeling, I was looking today at how I've sorted out the chapters, I don't quite remember the rhyme or reason that I chose to do so. I made this list a long time ago, but at the time I had a reason and I've forgotten what that is now because it's been several months. Um, so there's some, some of these videos have like four, four chapters in them. So I'm like, hmm, those are gonna be longer than usual, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, <laughs> right? So yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, won't we? But in any case, I'm pretty excited to dive into this week and see what all we have to deal with. So yeah. Let's not waste any more time. I've got my coffee. I'm ready to dive in and see what in the world we're dealing with. So I, I'm so excited, y'all. I can't wait. So let's not waste any more time. And we're going to dive right into the old Modao Zushi. Get back on track with uh, season two of the audio drama, episode 11. And just get into this turtle cave. Because we left off. We left off at a very compromising spot. All Wuxia was trying to help Wanji out of the lake. And we'll see what all shenanigans we get up to, right? But yeah, we're going to start this reaction uh, to the audio drama here in three, two, one. And let's do this. Oh, and that picture too. Oh, holding it, see the part, classic move. Oh, really make the turtles sound scary. Hold on to me tightly, of course. Are you happily surprised? Oh. And carrying him away. Oh. Running away from the turtle. Yes. A fantasy audio drama indeed. Yes. Okay. Probably. Ah, uh, okay. So it's like a maze. That's a little bit different than how the Donghua shows it. Mm. 
tree branches. Oh. Oh. No. Uh-huh. This is like the second time he's taking it off, right? At this point. Yeah, me and man's pouch. Yeah. Oh. I like that that Wanji's the one going through it. This little girl's pouch. Hmm. Don't you mean harass her well? Oh, that flirting. Oh, true. He's like, I'm hot. I can get away with it. <laughs> All the gay panic. Oh, the way he said his name. What do you think I'm doing? Stay away! Oh, to get him to cough up the blood. Hmm. Ha! I forgot that's why he did it. Yes, he did. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. You don't like men, huh? Nonsense indeed. Nonsense indeed. The most nonsensical. Hmm. Hmm. Come a little closer. <laughs> oh. Now, see, he says he doesn't like men, but then they had the whole drunken thing. Well, but that was in the present, though, wasn't it? That was in the present. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, he wants... Don't be so reckless. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's not my face. Who else is going to see my chest? Get a few scars, man, in the parallel mm, to Wanji getting it. Ah. Oh, wow, and the tie to Wanji scars. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Oh, I know you dislike me. Oh.
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Agitated and distracted. Oh, no. He likes you, you dummy! <laughs> Very enjoyable! Oh. A rotten luck. Oh, who else can you waste your breath with? Oh! Why did he bite him? Why is he biting him? Ah! Why did you do that, Wanji? Kissing him was to bite him because he didn't he couldn't do anything else. Oh 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 Hmm Huh. I can't believe he bit him. Hmm. Hmm. Ah. What else could it be? A tortoise. Can't be. Hmm. It's not proper, it's corrupted. Ah. Hmm. A fake one, yeah. Okay, they talked about this in The Untamed. The Tortoise of Slaughter. Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, God, I can't read the, wait to read this in the novel to see some more behind the whole biting thing. Hmm. But God, Wushin, you, you're so oblivious. So oblivious. Oh, only 200 or 300 people. That's all. <laughs> oh, as many as entire villages and cities. Oh, over 5,000. Cool. Hmm. 
Oh, saying that Chang is clever. Hmm. Yeah, now we should sing the full scope of it. Yeah, and his dad hasn't died yet. Hmm. Right. ready for that. Oh, you couldn't chose any other word. A me buzzing around him. Oh, Oh. Oh, Wushin. By watching you sleep, oh. <laughs> Oh, okay. Hmm. Getting our ideas. And they left behind all the weapons, yeah. Use all the string, yeah, yeah. The string kill technique. Ah, by um, Yanli. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. 
Okay, yep. And this is basically similar to the Untamed. So is he going to find the sword in there, though? Gross. I did not need to hear that retching sound. Yeah. Ugh. Corpse sludge. Gross. Some of you in the Untamed noted that. With that pristine disposition, he'd pass out from the stench. Okay. Ooh. Oh, the music's getting like louder. Ooh. Ooh, I love it. All right. Okay. Oh, it's trying to swallow him. Oh. Oh. Oh, and he stabbed it with it. I love it. Sounds of battle. It's like, yes, yes. Well, shit. Oh my gosh, it's like, not being able to see this is, and you think I've seen it twice before, so. Oh. 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 Yeah, something out of the ordinary indeed. Hmm. Uh-huh. No. Ah. Uh. Think of some other way. <laughs> oh, my 
my gosh, we should just cursing. Oh. Oh. It's your hands that are cold. Oh. Mm. Not in years. Oh. Ah. Hmm. Why don't you say, just do what I say? How the tables have turned! Hmm. So comfortable lying on the ground. Oh. Just your leg, huh? Don't fool around. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, because he likes you. gosh uh-huh we'll blame it on the fever hmm oh ocean honey Two days. Hmm, I did not. No, it wasn't a dream. I bet it wasn't. Oh. Oh. Wait patiently. And why'd you lose by those words so much, right? So bored, it's too quiet.
Oh, Wusha, no! Ha! You're overthinking it! Oh, well, why'd you know? Hmm. I won't get another chance after today! Oh my god. Ah! Must be corrected. He whispers it. It's so soft. Just, just stop. <laughs> just stop. Wanji humming his life. How dare you? Oh, that was worth it. Just to hear him hum. Oh, Wooshin, my, my chaotic gremlin, how can you not see it? Wanji loves you, and he is... <laughs> God. Yeah. It's so apparent, too. It's so obvious. And Wooshin just can't see it. Oh, and this is how we're going to do the outro, is it? Oh. And this is both of their their voice actors, right? Their voices are so beautiful. <laughs> oh. 
His voice is so good. Those harmonies. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yep. It's so good hearing. I just like want to listen to it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now the question is, are they going to give us a preview for episode 12? That's the question. That's the question, you know. Oh, they do not. Okay. All right. Oh, y'all. We got one more thing to watch. So let me pull this up. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let me pull this sucker up. So we have this thing called Wangshin. I was told on Patreon that as soon as I got done with, with the next, with the turtle cave, I had to watch this. So I'm like, okay, I can do this. Can do this. All right, so let's see what this is here. In three, two, one, and we'll start this now. Oh, of course, it's the music video of it. Because, yes, yes, this was on Sweepy and Subs, so, but it was an extra. I'll listen to it again. Of course I will. It said English Subs, so I'm guessing is this the lyric video? Is this the lyric video to it? G. I actually didn't get to see the lyrics, so. Pining for the truth, huh? And Wanji waiting for him. Oh, I like the blue and red. And this is Wushin. Hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, and it's them together with the blue and the red. Oh. Right? Of joy and regret. Oh, you so remain innocent. That's the best thing about this story is that we have these, this heartbreak and regret that they never originally saw each other the way that they should have. And then, but then there's the joy of them coming back and they're with each other and they have this second chance and it's like, it's the most romantic, hopeful thing in the world. Uh, right? Mm -hmm. Without fear of rage, ooh, and resentment always follows behind you. Oh, Wanji! Wusha has such a good voice in this. Ah. In this mundane world. Oh. And his voice is so like 
pure. Oh my god. In one instant, uh huh. Oh, to mind my famous, I did my past because he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to do that anymore because his emotion on his body. Oh. Oh. That's all for you. Ah. Oh my god. I'm so glad you recommended this because it's so good. Oh. Yeah. I'm not ready for the lotus pure burning. I can tell you that right now. It's happened twice already. I'm not ready for it another time. Ah, oh, that was so good. Oh, that was so good. Well, 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 well. How about that? So, yeah. Um, so what's going to happen is I am going to, I definitely want to talk about these. But first, I'm going to go and read the chapters in the novel, the manoir, and then come back and we go and talk about this. Huh. <laughs> so that was the turtle cave. Ah, ah, okay. Yep, 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 yep. I, man, Wuxian, my dude, I just, I just can't with Wuxian. <laughs> I just can't because it's so, it's so obvious for us, the audience, to know that Wanji really loves Wuxian and he's struggling with it because it's kind of going against Wanji's very character and his upbringing and everything. But he's like, I can't help it that I love this chaotic gremlin <laughs> that is oblivious. And so I, I was very curious. The novel goes into a lot more detail, obviously, than the audio drama can, especially when it comes to the turtle cave and the actual slaughter tortoise itself. The, the novel can go into much more detail and can actually show a little bit more into Wuxian's thinking process and, and gives a lot more. The thing about the novel that it can do that the audio drama cannot is it can give Wanji like actual depth of character because we it describes how Wuxian sees Wanji and the expressions and the micro expressions on his faces and everything that our poor chaotic gremlin is oblivious to and doesn't realize what it means. It's like, oh honey, you don't even know. So, so this was chapters 54 and 55. And then the manhwa was chapters 152 through 159. So a very short set of chapters for this specifically. But oh my god, Wuxian, honey. Honey. Ah! But um, I'm really glad I listened to the Wang Shen duet. That was glorious. I think I've listened to it maybe once back in the Donghua, in the Donghua but I wasn't paying attention to the lyrics. And now going back and listening and seeing the lyrics, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot different, right? A lot different. But yeah, so the, the forehead ribbon, like so many things, so many little subtle things mentioned in these chapters that it's funny. It's so frustrating as an audience member with the way this book is set up because you have the present timeline. I kept being like, well, Wanji's all flirty and everything now, but that's in the present timeline after Wuxian's come back. So, of course, Wanji's like, yep, I've always had these feelings for you, and now I get a chance to act on them. And in a way, Wanji never really acted on them in the moment. So, of course, Wuxian, being oblivious, wasn't able to pick up the, pick up the signals. And now Wanji's like laying it on thick in the present so that Wuxian actually gets it. It's like, oh, like Wanji doesn't have a choice. It's like, I've got to be as blunt as possible. Otherwise you're not going to get it. And still, and still Wuxian does it for a while. But there's like so many, it's so frustrating as an audience member seeing this in the past because we know what ends up happening with them in the present. And I'm like, we're setting all this like flashback stuff up. So when Wuxian wakes up, it's probably going to be a thing, right? Because there's pretty much no, there was romance in this, but it's very chaste. Right, very chaste and suggestive, and we need to talk about this. 
like Wuxian taking the forehead ribbon and using it as the, the brace. It's like, yeah, you knew that was coming, right? And then Mian Mian's patch. Poor Mian Mian. You know, she really has no clue the impact that she's had on this story. <laughs> she really doesn't, right? Mian Mian has no clue that her actions that were just her being kind and returning the gesture to Wuxian by giving him that herb pouch, it's gonna come back. It's had repercussions for years, right? Um, but yeah, I like in the novel, it shows Wanji like going through, and in the audio drama too, going through the herbs and picking out which ones to use. Like Wanji's the knowledgeable one and Wuxian's like, I got these herbs, which ones are gonna heal you? And Wanji goes through with it. But God, Wanji, he's so jealous at the start of this. And it's so obvious that he's jealous. Like he gets jealous of me and me and, and cause Wuxian's like, oh, I have to go back and thank her. And, and Wanji's like, oh, you mean harass her? And Wuxian's like, I don't harass people. And here's the thing for the novel. The novel gets more into it. Like in the novel, it is much more apparent that Wanji is very jealous in this moment that Wuxian is being flirty about her. And you can tell Wanji just wants Wuxian to be like that about him, but he can't say anything, right? And so, Wuxian, he, he questions, you know, you were careless and you didn't think about it and you're reckless to get this brand. Like, you're injured too. And Wuxian's like, it's different. I'm a man. Like, this is a battle scar, right? And there's the whole thing um, where Wuxian's like, I don't like men. And I'm like, but you do. <laughs> but you do. But you do. So... Uh, it's funny because in the cave he denies it. In the cave, in the cave scene he denies it. He's like, I don't like men. And I'm like, well, your previous escapades at Gusu say otherwise, and the present definitely says otherwise. But okay, because he kisses him in the present, right? When they're drunk. So I'm like, okay. But um, but he says he doesn't like men. He's like, don't worry, Wanji, I'm not gonna flirt with you. And that that makes Wanji mad because Wanji loves him, and it's just furthering it, the problem is Wanji loves Wushin, but he can't say anything. One because of how he views himself, I'm sure, but also because of things like that. When Wuxian's like, I don't like men, Wanji's like, well, well, then why would I admit that I love you if you don't like men? It's not gonna get reciprocated. So he's just, he's in this cave with his unrequited love. And it's so, it's torturous for him. Like Wanji's got all this stuff going on. His father's dying, his brother's missing. And the last place he'd wanna be is trapped in a cave with someone whose love is unrequited. And it's like, oh. But yeah. Wuxian talks about the scars, and I thought that was such a cool parallel looking back on it because Wuxian's like, oh, well, I have the scar, but it shows I'm a man, and I'm never ever going to forget what I did for them, and they're not, gonna, they're never going to forget that I saved them. They're never, they're, they're never going to forget that I protected them. And it's so interesting because Wanji gets mad at that moment. He's like, yeah, he's like, He's like, it is proof someone won't forget you, that she's not going to forget you. Because Wuxian, he says, I think it's quite, and he doesn't finish the sentence. I wondered if he said, I wondered if what he was trying to say was, I think it's quite romantic. And Wanji cut him off because the last thing Wanji wants to hear is Wuxian being flirty and, and showing interest in Mian Mian. So Wanji's like, no, you don't realize what you've done. Now she won't forget you. And so Wuxian doesn't understand the moment what that means. He's like, well, why are you mad about it? But Wanji's mad because, yeah, now this woman's not going to forget Wuxian. And he doesn't want her to advance on Wuxian. He wants to. But I think it's a cool, interesting note because later on, Wanji, if you've watched the Donghua, Wanji gets the scars on his back from the, from the discipline whip because he protected Wuxian while he was the yielding patriarch. So it's almost like the scars that Wanji gets proves that he's a man and that Wuxian won't forget them, right? He's like, he's like, Wuxian won't, this way I won't forget what I did for Wuxian protecting him in that moment. And Wuxian won't forget either. And it's like, ah! So it's kind of like the, the tables, it all comes full circle in the end because then Wuxian does notice the scars. He's like, how did Wanji get those? And then he eventually finds out, right? Which we haven't got to that point in the novel yet. But in the Dong he finds out and it's like, mm. So it all comes full circle, which I thought was really interesting. But yeah, Wanji in the novel, and he says so in the audio drama, he's like, stop flirting if you're not intentionally flirting. He's like, quit flirting with this girl if your intention isn't to get with her, because it's just making Wanji mad, right? It's just, and he says it's leaving others in turmoil. And at that point, you're like, Wanji is just suffering because he can't get with Wuxian, and Wuxian's talking about this other woman, and Wanji hates it. And Wuxian, our oblivious gremlin's like, I'm gonna flirt with you, so why are you in turmoil? And it's like, ugh. He's like, unless, you know, it's just, oh my gosh, it's just great. It's great. And then Wanji bites him. 
he bites him, and Wuxian thinks later that it's because Wanji couldn't move his leg. So to get Wuxian away from him, he, the only thing he could think of is to bite him like a dog. And then Wuxian backs away because he's scared. But it's like, the, the concept of Wanji biting someone, they didn't show us that in the Donghua. And I'm kind of a little resentful because I'm like, I, but I don't know what to think about it. Because it's like, the last thing I'd imagine Wanji doing is biting someone, which is crazy, right? Absolutely crazy. But yeah, so then, and then we have the scene where he cries, where Wanji cries. And I like in the novel that Wuxian establishes, he's like, and, and I, I'm kind of with Wuxian on this, right? I kind of, I really related to Wuxian in this moment because Wuxian's like, I hate when people cry. When women cry, my knee-jerk reaction is to make them laugh because he's like, he's like, I don't know, I don't like seeing women cry. It makes me uncomfortable. He's like, but when a man cries, he's like, I can't make them laugh. I can't comfort them. I can't do anything. So it's even worse. And I totally relate to Wuxian because I'm very much the type of person that when someone's sad, I often don't know what to do because I feel like I'm kind of like Wuxian in this moment. You, you want to say something. My, my knee jerk reaction when I get sad or nervous is that I laugh. Like when I get nervous, I laugh or scared. I'm like, ha, because that's like a, a, a defense mechanism, right? And so that's just my reaction. I'm like, oh, I'll just diffuse the tension by laughing. Um, but in Wuxian's case, he's like, I can't really laugh because this is something serious about Wanji's dad dying. He's like, but I don't know what to do. I don't know how to comfort Wanji. And I, I totally relate to Wuxian in that moment. It's like, what do you do to comfort that person? And so Wuxian tries to say something. And, and I, I've always, in all three versions, in the Donghua, in the Untamed, and in this, I always kind of resent the fact that Wanji tells him to shut up. And he's like, you're the type of person I de you're detestable or you're in the in the manual it says you're the type of person I hate the most I've always disliked that line because it's disingenuous it's disingenuous to Wanji's character because Wanji does like Wuxian and I in the moment Wanji's just he's infuriated with him because of the circumstance of what's going on coupled with everything else going on with him but that line's always that line has never sat well with me and I've always felt kind of like, mm. and it, it seems like Wanji regrets that later on because he's like, I pushed Wuxian away, right? So I don't know. That line has always like sat oddly with me. So it was weird hearing it again in the audio drama and seeing it in the novel as well. But what can we do, right? So yeah, they end up talking about old Jean, Jean Wu, the, the turtle, the tortoise, the slaughter tortoise, saying that it's not pure, it's deformed. And... Wuxian's like, I, he's like, I would, I love that Wuxian says, I would much rather be bickering with Chang because at least Chang's clever about it. And it's like, mm. it's like Wuxian thinking about his brother. And then, and then Wuxian gives him his cloak and everything to try to dry off and try to cheer him up, make him feel better. And he's like, my cloak's dry. You can have it. I'll be fine without it. And in the audio drama, Wanji says, yes, in the novel, he doesn't say anything. Neither does he in the manual. He just... Wuxian tosses it on him. He's like, fine, take it. And that's the end of it. So, yeah, they think the beast is blocking the exit. And then the string kill technique, I like the tie back to Lan Yi. I like the tie back to her, that he's going to use this, the cord killing technique to kill the turtle. And then we actually go inside the turtle and the corpse sludge. In the Untamed, when I was watching it, I was like, oh, it's just like mucus and stuff. And some people in the comments were like, wait till you get to the novel. Nope. And I was like, oh, ew. It is just like literally the sludge of people that have rotted inside this tortoise it's like well that's disgusting <laughs> great job but then yeah finding the metal rod finding the sword and it kind of just like whooshing clinging to it is very intriguing um i in the untamed he keeps it with him but in this it gets dropped in the water which i think is pretty important um but yeah before we even get to the whole sword falling in the water the fact of the matter is in the Dogwa and in the Untamed and in the audio drama, they make quick work of the turd of, of the tortoise battle, and it seems like it's just tortoise is dead, we're good. In the novel, they're able to explain the time frame better, and Wanji had that cord around the tortoise's necks for six hours. Six hours. To the point where in the manhwa it shows his hands just like dripping with blood. He's held onto that string for so long showing his dedication to killing the tortoise, but also to getting Wuxian out of there. And then he goes to open the tortoise's mouth. And I love how the novel describes it. They describe Wuxian as, and I put on my notes down here, that Wuxian was clinging to the sword inside the mouth, 
curled up like a shrimp. And then Wanji grabs him and he drops the sword and the sword falls to the bottom of the lake. And it's like, uh huh. It's kind of crazy. And then they go to try to get out of the hole and it's been blocked. And here's the thing. Wuxia was holding on to that sword and that resentful energy for six hours. So already we're getting previews of that resentful energy starting to take hold of Wuxia. And the Donghua, it's very quick. And it's an effective visual to show you that the, the energy is getting inside of him. But in this, it's, it's subtly implied. But if you've read, if you've watched the Donghua and you know what's coming, you're like, oh, okay. So the, the resentful energy is like slowly seeping into him and changing his disposition because he starts cursing. And, and Wanji at first, before they dive, notices something's off. And you could argue that it's, it's the resentful energy, but also the wound that's acting up. But then when Wuxian's like, like he curses, like he drops an F-bomb and just like starts cursing and ranting and raving. And Wanji's like, something's not right about you. And you can argue it's the fever and the sickness. But the other part of it too is that the resentful energy has somewhat altered his disposition. And it's like, aha, uh -huh, interesting. It's a nice little bit of foreshadowing. And not only foreshadowing to the yielding patriarch and what it does to Wuxian and his personality, but it's also foreshadowing of how Wanji is concerned for him and doesn't like the fact that it's altering his mood. It's like, it's a very good foreshadowing bit there. I like it a lot. Um, and then the moment where Wuxian asks for the sword in the novel, he's like, where'd it go? Where'd the sword go? It reminded me of Bilbo Baggins in Lord of the Ring in, when Frodo gets rid of the ring and Bilbo's like, where's the ring? Do you have it? Like, it's almost like an addiction, right? It's like Wuxian's craving the sword. He's like, hey, where'd that sword go? I wanted to, I wanted to mess with it and tinker with that resentful energy. And then Wanji's like, oh, it fell to the bottom of the lake. And Wuxian's like, oh, okay. Like, he lets it go. But it was very Lord of the Rings-esque. Like, kind of like a little bit like a junkie. Like, he wanted it back. Again, good foreshadowing, right? He was asking for it. And so then, yeah. So then... We've got old Wuxian, Wanji trying to heal him, and Wuxian's rejecting all the, the healing powers, you know, because he wants him, Wanji to save it for himself. And the manhwa and the audio drama say, can I sit on your leg? In the novel, it's lap. He's like, let me sit on your lap. And he's like, we're just a bunch of guys. Wuxian's like, we're just two dudes chilling in a cave. Let me sit on your lap. It's more comfy. And Wanji's like, mm-mm. Because we all know that Wanji, how he feels about Wuxian, he's like, you ain't sitting on my lap. No, 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 no. No, no, no. So then Wuxian falls asleep from the fever and the novel definitely, the manhwa and the audio drama, the manhwa is the least um, subtext about it. The manhwa just like shows Wuxian passing out and waking up. Um, the audio drama gives the impression that maybe Wanji let Wuxian sleep on his lap. The audio drop, the novel pretty much confirms it. The novel pretty much says that, yeah, Wanji let Wuxian sit on his lap ran his hand through his hair, like stroked his forehead, like checked on him and everything. And then right when Wuxian was about to wake up, he put him back on the straw. And it's like, okay, subtle novel. But two days have passed and Wuxian is kind of like not only having cabin fever, but he's kind of delirious from the fever. Like he's just, he he's a bad patient. Wuxian is not, he gets the man flu and he's a bad patient basically. And poor Wanji has to struggle with him and it's like, leave me alone. Um, but then, yeah, I, I did want to note that in the, I kind of, in the reaction for the audio drama, I was like, ooh, because Wuxian says he's calls him Gege, Gege, or Gege, however, Gege, however you pronounce it, um, which is the way of saying brother, but in kind of like a very informal way. And the novel makes note of it that the way that Wuxian said, that called uh, Wanji that was a flirty manner. He was very flirty when he said that. It's like, mm. so Wuxian's not helping his cause at all. Wuxian's not helping his cause. Wanji has these feelings. Wuxian's not helping matters, you know. And then we have the infamous, the Wangshan, Wanji humming, which I have to say, Wanji, his voice actor has a beautiful singing voice and a beautiful humming voice. And so does Wuxian, but Wanji's, it was like all I needed was just that transition into the Wangshan theme and the humming. It was so perfect. I like didn't want to say anything. It was hard. In this reaction, this, this episode of the audio drama, there was lots of like breaths and sighs and like little tiny micro nuances and micro expressions that you could, you could hear audibly. And I almost didn't want to say anything because I was like, I just wanted to listen and hear it because the, the sound was so good. But then, yeah, we had the Wangshan duet. It's like, ah. Uh. So I'm assuming... The next part is going to, oh God, we're getting into Lotus Pier. 
I just finished Lotus Pier and the Untamed, and we're we're calling. We're just it's just like just bring on the pain train. I I've watched it in the in the Dongwa. I've watched it in the Untamed, and now we're gonna finish off with the OG, the OG Lotus Pier. That one will surely be the most happy of them all. Third time's a charm, right? Because yeah, yeah. Next next chapters are gonna be Wushin. I'm gonna be curious because now since I've watched the Untamed, they they handle things a little bit differently than the Donghua. So it's gonna be very interesting the next couple of episodes of reactions to see with the novel how they handle the lowest peer burning and what all we learn from it. Because I have a feeling that there's a lot of things that might get expanded upon, a lot of things that might be reorganized, rearranged. I'm really excited by that, but I don't know what to expect. But I'm really, really excited. So so yeah, this this episode in particular was just the two chapters. It was just our cave scene. Very nonchalant, nothing to see here. But just God, Wushin, given Wanji like the biggest case of blue balls ever. Like you're just gah. You just want to grab Wushin and be like, figure it out. And he is figuring it out, you know, 13, 16 years later in the present. And Wanji's making sure he figures it out because that, that, I said that in the reaction. That's the one good thing about this series is that it's, it's so bittersweet when you look back on the past and you're like, man, things really sucked for that moment. But now you're back in the present and Wushin's getting a second chance and Wanji's getting a second chance. And you're like, you just want to root for them to be happy and be with one another. And it's like, mm. so yeah, these chapters were really, really good. I was happy with the turtle cave. Um, that sound that Wanji made when he started crying was enough to break my heart. So there's that. But yeah, I'm pretty excited to see what's going to go down starting next episode with the Lotus Pier. Should be a fun time. Should be a really, really fun romp, right? Right? So yeah. I, I hope you all enjoyed this reaction. I'm probably going to watch The Untamed real soon. I'm real excited about it. Um, but in the meantime, I'm curious to know your thoughts down below. And I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, I'll be back next week with chapters 56 through 58 of Modao Zushi. Bye.